Hey guys, today I'm going to show you nine knitting hacks that you can use in your knitting. Maybe you know some of them, maybe you know none of them. Either way, let's get into it. So if you knit while commuting, you know that you can't just like stuff your knitting into your purse. It collects dust, your keys get all messed up in it. You've got to put it in some kind of bag to keep it safe. Now, if you don't have a fancy project bag, don't fret because you can use a humble Ziploc bag. That's right. All you need to do is punch a hole in the top of the bag and make a cut from the top to the hole. You only need to cut through one side of the bag. Feed the yarn through the hole, close up the bag and start knitting. Just pull on the yarn and it'll feed smoothly through the hole. And bada bing bada boom, you've got yourself a project bag. Cheap, easy, portable, slightly waterproof, a great hack that I still use to this day. This next hack goes out to all you chart knitters out there. If you ever get confused about what row you're on when you're working your chart, you can use a post-it note or washi tape to underline the row that you're on and then just move it up as you work your rows so that you're always underlining the row that you're on and covering up the rows that you've already worked. Washi tape is a pretty and decorative tape that's kind of like masking tape, but less sticky. Just make sure that your washi tape doesn't lift off any ink from your chart. If you've ever opened up a new pair of long circular needles, then you might find that the cable is super curly and out of control. That's because the cables have been coiled up in their package for a long time and the curl has kind of set into the cable. So to uncurl the cable, just fill up a large casserole dish filled with boiling water. Then just drop your needles into the casserole dish and watch those cables unravel and uncurl. Wow, so magic. The longer the needles have been coiled up, the longer it may take for them to uncurl in the water. So just give it some time. And if you need, you can kind of coax those curls loose with like a pair of chopsticks or a pencil. If you find weaving in your yarn tail from your cast on a real drag, then do this instead. So instead of weaving this leftover yarn at the end of our knitting, what we can do is actually weave it in right into our first row. I'm going to knit into my first stitch and I'm going to hold this leftover yarn tail with my working yarn just like this, okay? So two strands of yarn now become one. So I'm gonna knit with these two strands of yarn held together like this. And I'm just going to knit into like four or five stitches. So now I've knit five stitches and I can just let go of the leftover yarn now. Just leave it hanging, pick up my working yarn and just continue knitting to the end of my row. So I've just finished my first row and I'm going to turn my needle over. The leftover yarn is just hanging off the end here. I can take out a pair of scissors, snip it right off. And now I'm going to work my row two. And once I get to these stitches here, I can just knit right into them. All right, so now I've reached these stitches and I'm just going to knit directly into those stitches. We're just pretending like these stitches are regular old stitches. There we are. So that's a nice stealth way to weave in your leftover yarn into your work. If you need to measure something post haste and you don't have a ruler or a tape measure handy, then just use your finger. The space from the tip of your finger to the joint is roughly one inch. So when you need a rough measurement of your work, just use your finger until you can get your hands on an actual ruler. So if you need to measure, whip out that finger. If you're working on a pattern while you're away from home, then keep it within reach by emailing it to yourself, sending it to the cloud, or taking a photo of it so that your pattern is always just a click away. Woohoo! So this next one is a good one. So you know how with the long tail cast on, you have to like estimate how much yarn you need before you cast on. And you know how sometimes you have too much yarn or too little yarn and you have to rip back your cast on? Yeah, I absolutely hate when that happens. When you've cast it on more than like a hundred stitches for a shawl or a blanket and you find out you need to rip back your work, you're just like, <laughs> no! My friend, it does not need to be like that. Take the guesswork out of the long tail cast on by casting on with two strands of yarn. 
Mind blowing, right? Let's get into it. All right, so this hack works best with a center pull ball of yarn, or if you have two balls of yarn. So this is what a center pull ball looks like. It's called this because in the center, you can actually pull the yarn through, and you've also got the other end of your yarn on the outside of your yarn. So here you can see I've just got two yarn strands, and they're both coming from the same ball of yarn. Okay, so I've got my two strands of yarn here, and what I'm gonna do is make a regular old slip knot. And there's my little slip knot. So I'm gonna take one needle and just put the slip knot onto my needle and tighten that puppy up. Perfect. Okay, so now I've got two strands of yarn and I'm just gonna start casting on with the long tail using these two strands of yarn. Now I'm going to ignore the slip knot, pretend it doesn't exist at all, okay? It's just gone, it's dead to me. Just pretend it's not there. Okay, so let's say I need to cast on 10 stitches. I would just start casting on like this and I would start counting from here, okay? So this is one stitch I've cast it on. All right, so now I have cast it on 10 stitches, not including this slip knot. I'm going to turn my needle over, and now I need to make a decision. I need to decide which strand of yarn I want to knit with, because I've got two strands of yarn coming off of my needle, right? One is leading into the outside of my ball of yarn here. The other one is leading into the center pole of my ball. So I've decided that I wanna knit with the center pole. So I'm going to take a pair of scissors and snip it off like eh, five or six inches down, snip it off and just roll up the rest of this yarn here and now I've only got one strand of yarn coming from my needle, and that's the yarn that I want to knit with. Cool. So now I'm gonna knit my first row until I get to this slip knot, and do not knit the slip knot, okay? Once we get here, I will show you what we're going to do. I'm on the last stitch before my slip knot. Here we go. Once I get to this slip knot here, I'm just going to take it off the needle, and then grab these two strands of yarn and just pull them. Oof. Ah, and now you can see that our slip knot has just disappeared. I've just pulled these two strands just to kind of tighten it up, but our slip knot is now gone. It has disappeared. I really just have 10 stitches on my needle and now I can just start knitting normally. Once I've finished whatever I'm knitting, I can weave in these two yarn strands here and of course here and that's it. So that's my hack for the long tail cast on. Just use two strands of yarn. There's no estimating of yarn, no worries, no nerves, nice and easy. So you can buy stitch markers online or at your local craft store, but there are probably stitch markers hiding in your home right now. Not like in a creepy murder way, but like in an innocuous, it's just laying around kind of way. For instance, you can easily make stitch markers out of paper clips, which are super flexible. A bit of yarn tied together in a loop, I do this all the time. A small rubber band or a hair tie, which I also use. And even the ring from your own finger. Although maybe not your wedding ring for obvious reasons. <laughs> stitch markers are hiding in plain sight all around your home. Again, not in a creepy way. <laughs> so the next time you need a stitch marker, you've got options all around you. At some point, you're gonna wanna wash your knitted items. Your socks, your hats, your shawls, they get dirty, just like all your other clothes. If you don't have special wool soap, you can use baby shampoo instead. Yes, you heard that right, it's shampoo for the baby. <laughs> Think about it, wool and human hair are both made out of protein. So baby shampoo, which has the least amount of extra ingredients, should be gentle enough for your woolen items. I usually do a little squeeze in warm water, swish the knitting around for a few minutes, rinse in warm water, and lay it out to dry. That's it. And that's a wrap on my nine favorite knitting hacks. Which knitting hack are you gonna use? Are you gonna cast on with two strands of yarn or bring your knitting out in a Ziploc bag? Which hack resonated with you? And hey, if you have a knitting hack that I didn't cover, then please share it down below in the comments. I would love to learn from you and I'm sure everyone else watching would also love to learn. Let's make the comment section a fun place for learning and sharing knitting ideas, okay? Like this video if you liked it and subscribe for more videos like this one. I'm Davina from sheepandstitch.com. Thanks for watching, happy hacking, and I'll see you next time. Bye.